Well, I'd like to show you how you can explore a modulation scheme in a fair bit of detail. If you start with a little bit of mathematical background from your textbook, then the LabVIEW Modulation Toolkit is a nice way to get a little bit more of a hands-on or gut feel sense of what's going on. In this example, I'm going to look at QAM or quadrature amplitude modulation. And there are four principal sub VIs that we need here. And these will be sufficient to take care of generating the complex baseband representation for the, the QAM transmitter. Now you can use your context help to get a quick sense of what the inputs and outputs look like. In particular, we need to specify the samples per symbol as well as the number of QAM symbols that are necessary. And click on detailed help to get uh, the full scoop on how to use that sub VI. And that, that would be important really for each, each of these just to get a better sense for the requirements and limitations that you need to be aware of. So we see generate system parameters produces the in information that's necessary for the modulator. Symbol rate is necessary and here we see the pulse shaping filter coefficients. I think I'll just go ahead and use the default for the symbol rate. Here we need to again specify the modulation type, the pulse shaping filter type, and we need the samples per symbol again. And for this illustration, I'm going to use the defaults on, on quite a bit of the inputs here. All right, taking a look at our bit generator. I think the one that I'll establish a, a front panel control has uh, to do with the total number of bits. This way I can vary the length of the message that's being transmitted. In order to visualize the time domain behavior of the QAM signal, I'm going to go ahead and look at the in phase component, or that is the I component, as well as the Q component. Now we have two types of outputs on the get complex IQ component. And let me first place the two time domain graphs, then we'll figure out which output we need to connect. To 
turns out that we need the what it's labeled as the CE or conflict complex envelope and again here we see the in phase and quadrature components showing up make those just a little bit smaller and let's go ahead and place one of the visualization tools from the modulation toolkit the constellation graph plots the complex baseband signal with the quadrature term on the vertical axis and the in-phase term on the horizontal axis Again, here's our, our quadrature term and the in-phase term. This is perhaps a little bit easier to, to interpret if you use a fairly small number of symbols at first, or a small number of bits, excuse me. So with the default settings, we have four bits per symbol. We have 16 symbols possible. And as you, as you start to compare the time domain plots, you can see how the I and the Q components are mapped in this constellation plot. So the, the white dot tells you where the symbol is located, and the red trace shows the transition from one symbol to the next. So I think it'd be worthwhile, you could, you could look at relatively small number of bits first and just try to correlate what you see between the time domain plot and the constellation plot. Now with raised cosine pulse shaping, of course, the time domain plots are more rounded looking and so we see that behavior showing up in the constellation plot as well. And as we increase the total number of bits, you start to fill in that constellation plot. And we see that for uh, what we call 16 QAM, that we have 16 symbols arranged in this square grid. What I'd like to do is do next is get a, a little bit more interactivity in the front panel. I'm going to wrap the entire structure in a while loop. And I need the while loop to be paced by the weight sub VI. I'll set this one up to establish a weight of 100 milliseconds, that is, tenth of a second. That way the loop updates 10, 10 times a second. And that, that's sufficiently fast that you get the feel of good interactivity with your front panel con uh, controls, but yet it's not going so fast that it consumes a lot of your system resources. So again, we see that each time you change a parameter, it updates the graph. Now we can get a lot more continuous type of interaction ability if we change out the numerical control for the pointer slide format. Let me adjust the maximum value here and the minimum number of bits that we should be working with is four. Give just a little bit more room to work with here. So here you see you can very quickly adjust the total number of bits and start to get a better sense of how things like the message length affects the shape of the constellation graph. So 
So you can make some pretty interesting artwork this way. I should point out that we have a specific sequence of bits here. If you wanted to adjust the, the uh, sequencing of the bits, you can actually manipulate a seed parameter on that generate bits sub VI, and that way you can get different sequences. like to point out some additional sub-VIs to be aware of. Definitely one that's useful here is something that introduces channel impairment, specifically by introducing additive white Gauss Gaussian noise. So you have a number of parameters that you can specify and simply insert that in between the QAM output and our various um, time domain, time domain, and constellation indicators. The signal to noise ratio per bit, or EBNO as it's known, can also be set up as a pointer slide. Can make that operate in in more interactive way this this way. And uh, 40 decibels is reasonably noise-free signal. And what you start to realize here fairly quickly is that uh, low levels of noise cause just slight deviations in those sim uh, constellation points or symbol points. As you start to increase the noise, then we see that there's more variance or spread for each symbol position. Again, there's other channel impairments that you can explore as well. I'd also like to point out that at, at some point you'd like to start setting up a, a corresponding receiver for your transmitter. So the QAM demodulate sub VI is important for that. You might look at the eye diagram to get a, uh, additional insight into how the signal is degraded by these various channel impairments. And also look at sync params. That's going to also be necessary in receiver for recovering uh, the correct bit stream.